Russia here with the Other Anthem Podcast. This is Corey. <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. It is 3.48 Pacific time. That makes it 6.48 Eastern time. And the Other Anthem Podcast is live across the nation. Welcome to episode 169. Yes. Thank you for podcast. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for downloading. Thank, thank you for you rating. Thank you for being a friend. Yeah. Um, thank you for being a friend. <laughs> but yes, uh, we are coming to you live uh, from high above the 110 freeway from the beautiful uh, hashtag OTA LA Studios. Uh, so thank you for joining us again this week. Uh, before we jump into the topic of the week, I do want to take one short aside. Uh, I... Let's see how short this aside really is. <laughs> I binged The Handmaiden's Tale this week. And guys, I highly, highly recommend it. Now, I'm going to say, if you aren't a person of a certain class and sophistication, you may not get it. Right, Corey? <laughs> <laughs> I, listen, I, I enjoyed it fine. I just... There is so much good TV out right now. Mm -hmm. And it is hard for me to... Uh, decide what to watch what did we watch all night last night uh kitchen nightmares <laughs> yeah <laughs> but it's good i like kitchen nightmares and it's episodes i haven't seen it's it's okay. good stuff <laughs> we're in the golden age of tv we're in the golden Look what age they're competing against like kitchen nightmares <laughs> <laughs> reality tv yeah but i mean like okay so i was thinking about this the other day uh i think there's like different subsects of reality tv okay because i mean like if you want to be real like game shows are reality tv sure because it's real people who are competing to win prizes. That's not really the definition of. Uh, oh, I know, TV, but I'm but saying like, sure. you know, if you want to, if you want to make it broad enough, you can say that reality TV includes game shows. Sure. Yeah. And I think that there's a difference between Gordon Ramsay mm -hmm. and Bar Rescue and things like that, and the Kardashians. Right. Because much like everything in the world, if not Corey all likes reality it, TV is bad. If Corey likes it, it's good. If Corey doesn't like it, it's bad. Yeah, Music, clearly. Television, movies, that's the I standard. don't understand why you guys aren't going by the Baker barometer <laughs> yep. on whether or not things are good. <laughs> I'm sensing there is it might be a YouTube series in there somewhere. The Baker barometer. <laughs> this week, Handmaiden's Tale. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> I'm going to... It's going to be like uh, from the critic with the shermometer. Exactly. Like, this one is freezing. <laughs> that is the best face ever. Uh, yeah. And if, of course, if you guys aren't watching uh, on YouTube.com forward slash or the anthem, you're missing all these fantastic faces that Corey's, Corey's making. Or Facebook.com slash or the anthem where you can watch the live stream on but Saturdays. Every Saturday we do a live stream of the show. Well, most Saturdays we do a live stream of the show. Uh, so you can catch it on there. Make sure you're following at Twitter uh, on Twitter at uh, o the anthem at Robert and Cheek at Legend CB5 mm -hmm. uh, on Instagram at o the anthem at Legend CB5 at Robert and Cheek. Uh, because at least in that part, we are uh, doing uh, synergy across all of them. Yeah. Now, when it comes to Corey Baker filmmaker, that's a whole other <laughs> thing. You have to check out episode 168 for the discussion on that. But um, anyway, so so make sure you do uh, join us for the live stream on Saturdays. Uh, of course, the episode will be live uh, for everyone on Tuesday in the podcast format. And you can always check out the video at youtube.com forward slash O the Anthem. So make sure you do that. Um, but Handmaid's Tale, uh, Handmaid's Tale was fantastic. Uh, I think that it was a little slow to get started. Uh, if you've never checked out the source material, which I assume you haven't. I, I'm aware of it. Right. It's feminist literature, so yeah. Corey, pff, not really a fan of that. And the only time he's touched The Handmaid's Tale is when he tossed it on that big pile of burning books uh, <laughs> back outside of his uh, meetings yeah. back in Maryland. Um, but no, it, it's, uh, it's slow to get started. I will admit that. Uh, the first episode got me because I think it's uh, the subject matter. It's something that I write. It's something that I like. Right. And for you, that's it's not in the same thing. Like, the dystopian future isn't your like necessarily your thing. Yeah. And I mean, just like, uh, you know, I, I can admit that Game of Thrones is like a, a great looking television show and people really enjoy do, do, it. Do you want to go there? Let's go. Well, there. I haven't I haven't gotten into it enough that I feel like I can properly tell you. But I'm just saying, right. generally speaking, th this is not the thing that I like. And because uh, since the last time we talked about Game of Thrones, we watched exactly zero episodes because Corey's just not a fan of Game of Thrones. So, I mean, we'll watch another one at some point. Yeah. So uh, make sure if you love Game of Thrones, I want you to send a tweet to at LegendZB5 and let him know exactly not, what he's It's say. nothing against it. It's just not my thing. Like, I think you just said it was unimpressive and uh, boring. Was that the two terms? No. I, I said it was boring to me. Yeah. Which doesn't mean that it's boring to everybody. Right. Uh. And I, if I said unimpressed, it was, again, regarding my personal, like, I wasn't, like, blown away by it. But then again, I'm not the type of person who gets, like, caught up in that kind of... Right. 
That's at LegendCB5 on Twitter and Corey at OTheAnthem.com. You know, you know what it is? It's like uh, uh, somebody you know who doesn't watch sports. Okay. And you take them to like the first baseball game they ever see. Right. And say it was like a perfect game. And like, we would appreciate a, lo- a yeah, lot. Yeah. We would really enjoy it. We know how how things go along and how rare this is. Yeah. The person who's watching for the first time doesn't know baseball. You're trying to explain it to them. Like, they're not going to appreciate it the same way. Right. Because it's a a perfect game is a boring game. It's right. a lot of pitching. Yeah. Not a lot of excitement out, at least for one half of uh, the innings. And, I mean, like, it's hard to explain to somebody, like, this is very rare. Yeah. You're walking in on something unusual. Like. Right. But, so, you treat Game of Thrones like Like, if we walked game. into a, if there was, like, a musical episode of Game of Thrones, yeah. you'd be like, well, they're not all musicals, but, I mean, like, the <laughs> ones that are musicals are. <laughs> right. But, uh, so we'll watch it. We'll check it out. But everybody should let Corey know uh, that he should continue to watch it. In the meantime, but I'm an idiot. In the meantime, watch Handmaid's Tale on Hulu. Uh, there was a lot of press before about how they started this two years ago, and it just happened to come out during the spring of the Trump presidency. I I would like to uh, uh, also make a recommendation for okay. uh, Glow. Oh, which we haven't finished yet, but no. we're like two episodes away from being done, and that was. Excellent. Fantastic. And we both agree on that. And I think yeah. for different reasons, I think that, that there's something about that show that appeal, would appeal to a lot of different people for a lot of different reasons. Yeah. I mean, um, if you liked wrestling at all, you'd probably enjoy it. I, I had a wrestling phase, so yeah, uh, that definitely sit sat with me. I've also been like a huge Allison Brie fan since the minute that I saw her on screen. Right. So. Uh, that works as well for me. And Marin, I'll I love say Mark Marin. Marin's fantastic. In <laughs> yeah. It. Uh, I really would want to talk to him about whether he was triggered by all of the uh, stuff that he has to do. Uh, cause he's just like a coked out eighties TV producer so, right. or a movie producer returned yeah. producer, director. So, yeah. Uh, but anyway, so check out glow that's on Netflix. Check out handmaid's tale. That is a Hulu exclusive. Uh, if you don't have Hulu, do what I do and just beg somebody who does have Hulu <laughs> to give you their, uh, their name and password so you can log <laughs> on and watch it. you could just pay the $10 a month for it. I mean, you could, but it's $10. I know. And, like, and I will say that I've also been watching Ricky Morty and we've been watching Kitchen Nightmares. So yeah. like, there's got, it's gotten a little bit of use. It hasn't just been Handmaid's Tale. Um, right. So it might be worthwhile that, to pay for I, those. But. You know, it's funny. Uh, I, there's so many monthly subscription services. Yeah. And with Netflix setting a pretty high bar, like it's like ten dollars a month just for streaming. Yeah, it used to be the seven for two discs and streaming, and yeah. now it's up to like ten for just streaming. But. Right, but uh, with like ten dollars being like the streaming cost. Right. When I hear something like uh, CBS All Access is like eight bucks a month, I'm like, uh, why? Like yeah. everything you get on Netflix. Yeah. There's so many. The, the, how many things do I really want to watch on CBS All Access? Right. Like. It's it, there's not more content that's not available on Netflix that makes the, makes up for it. You the know? new uh, Star Trek uh, show will be on CBS All Access. Yeah, and that like literally, I would probably get it for just a month just to watch that, and then cancel. Um, just like I might have paid for Hulu for a month just to watch Handmaid's Tale. But like, I loved uh, The Good Wife. Right. Yeah. And then they ruined it. The last episode was the worst <laughs> ever. Um, I think you have to go back to like episode one forty something. Like where I finally caught up with the good wife, and <laughs> yes. I'm just, I was so angry. <laughs> so like when they said like, "Oh, we got a new good wife spinoff show," it's just like, "Fuck these guys!" Like <laughs> I'm not investing myself in something that's going to disappoint me. It's like, yeah, yeah. It's like I'm going to turn this hooker with a heart of gold around. She's going to be like a good wife one day. It's like, no, it's never going to work. Don't I'm do out. it. I'm out. Yeah. Uh, but Glow, fantastic. Make sure you check out that out. Uh, Handmaid's Tale, check it out. Uh, Kitchen warning. Nightmares, check it out. Well, <laughs> trigger warning on uh, Handmaid's Tale. There is a lot of sexual violence. There's a lot of physical violence. Uh, and there's a lot of, oh, shit, this is scary. Uh, we could actually be going this direction. This uh, might be real. Yeah. Uh, and the one thing I love about it is, uh, I think I've said this before on the podcast about uh, reading my Mein Kampf. Like when you are, when I read Mein Kampf when I was 13 years old, I was luckily smart enough that I got to a certain point where when I was shaking my head, like, you know what, this guy's making a lot of sense. And then I'd be like, nope, okay, time to put <laughs> nope, the book, forgot walk Hitler. away for a little while. Uh, <laughs> because like it's, it's convincing. And I had that same thought while watching Handmaid's Tale. Like with the, some of the arguments that the commanders are making, you're like, you know what, that's, I mean, the religious shit is bullshit, but yeah. th- they're using the religion to like do a greater, what they think is a greater good. And you're, you're like, like yeah, this society would be better without women. Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait, all right, I got to turn this off for a little while. I got to watch some Rick and Morty. I'll come back to it. Uh, yeah, but yeah. it's it's that it's that good. It's like you're torn because you uh, you love um, 
Elizabeth uh, Moss. Yeah. Elizabeth Moth? Moss so well. She does such a good job with the character, and you really are there with her. But then, uh, again, your complaint was about, uh, one of the complaints was about how focused it was on her in the first episode. Uh, no, I mean, I, I'm fine with focusing on Elizabeth Moss because right. she's a good actress. I yeah. just... I, I, it's just not my thing. I just I I don't know how to explain it other than that. Like, well, it goes away from her about episode four, and that's where I like watched four and five and like a little part of six, and I was like, you know what, we're gonna push pause on this and go away because it's a lot of time with like the upper governments, and yeah. they're like. I was like, you know what? This sounds a lot like stuff I've talked about before. Like maybe I should set up this religion and <laughs> try to use it to overthrow the country. Maybe. Uh, anyway, speaking of uh, overthrowing the country, Trump still president, uh, <laughs> unfortunately. But uh, another big loss for the Trumpster this week. Yeah. Um, I like the, the Trumpster. <laughs> I'm sure he loves that nickname. <laughs> Donald, listen, if you got a problem, at Robert and Cheek on uh, Instagram yeah, or please, Twitter, Twitter. Please tweet him about that. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing would Rob, be better. Rob just wakes up on like Wednesday morning and it's just like from at, at Donald J. Trump and it's just like Rob Cheek at Robert N. Cheek on the at O the Anthem podcast. Fake news. They don't know what's up. Yes. And, and I'm just waking up with my phone literally exploding from retweets <laughs> and I'm just like... <laughs> Oh, it's like it. shaking on the table. <laughs> it would be the greatest thing ever. Um, but yeah, so we talked a little bit of last, actually a lot of it last week about the uh, Trump health care or the Trump care bill. Mm-hmm. Uh, lovingly called wealth care. Wealth care. Yeah. Uh, and unfortunately, Thursday was D-Day. It came down to do they have the votes? Do they not? And Wednesday night, it was looking dire. Uh, there were two votes left outstanding that were like uh, one of them said, I'm not convinced to vote yes yet. And the other one was, I'm just not sure. And then by Thursday morning, uh, apparently they received like 500,000 phone calls. And yeah. those both became no votes. So in the way that Congress works, well, there wasn't actually a vote. <laughs> they well, just what, postponed it. What, it. what it really is is that uh, you, when it's a bill that you're worried, you don't want to be on the record with like a yes. Yeah. You do that like, I don't know where I'm standing on it just yet. And then if you get a half a million calls, then... <laughs> Right. You're just like, all right, well, I'm not going to be able to fight this when it comes for re-election, so yeah. I might as well just uh, say this is a no for me, and then... And that is, the re-election part is the important thing. Because there's a lot of things that, like, you know, you, there's a lot of excuses you could put out there, like, oh, well, you know, like, in th- I'd like to be able to stand with my Republican counterparts, but I haven't actually read the bill yet, and I, I feel like... I shouldn't comment on whether or not I'm voting for it, yes or no, until I've had the op- actual right. opportunity to sit down and read the bill. By the way, the best comment of the that's week. A, that's a, I'm leaning yes, unless somebody tells, somebody me. tells me no. The best comment of the week was a Republican senator who spent five minutes uh, during an inter- a, a interview, not on camera, but like with a newspaper, defending the bill. And then uh, the person asked, well, what portion of the bill do you think is going to... Uh, to make all of these fantastic changes. And he was like, you know what? Let's push pause for a minute. Give me five minutes. I'm going to go uh, read the bill. Like, he spent five minutes in an interview defending it and yeah. he had not read the bill yet. Like that's, that is, um, nope. That's how it works. Yeah. So, uh, unfortunately, but the good news is that for now it's dead. And there was a lot of joking last week about remembering a golden age where you didn't have to call your Senator five, 10 times a day in order mm. for him not to kill you. Like, uh, but unfortunately, guys, we are not out of that the woods yet. No. They really well, wanted to get the bill done before the recess, the July 4th recess. Here's part of the problem is that, like, uh, if you guys want to want to keep this up, you got to be vigilant all the way through. Yeah. Like, there's no, like, you know, like, oh, we're through his first year, so now it's just going to be smooth sailing. Let's ignore everything that's going on <laughs> politically. Because they're right. just going to sneak it in where they can. Like, it's it's not a – nothing is over. But what you can do is when your senators come home for their recess, you go to their office, mm-hmm. you demand that they make a town hall, you right. see them at the supermarket and yell like, hey, dirtbag from across the aisle or like whatever you have to do. Now, this will require you to go shopping at the grocery store that you don't usually go <laughs> shopping at because God the knows. The fancy grocery yeah. store? They're not Just shopping. yell at his Guatemalan nanny. <laughs> She'll pass the message along to the senator in question. Yeah, uh, and there, there's a big complaint that a lot of the congressmen senators aren't planning uh, town halls and they're not planning to see their constituents this, uh, this break. But keep in mind this. It's July 4th. You know what also works? is just calling and saying, when is the, when is the senator going to take time to meet? And then it's just like, oh, he doesn't have anything planned. He doesn't have anything planned? Hmm. Why doesn't he have anything planned? And then yeah. just put them on the defensive of saying, like... Why wouldn't he yeah, do that? Well, yeah. he really wants to spend time with family and watch fireworks. 
yeah, but he works for me, right. and usually on the he's breaks, not in Utah. Yeah, he's yeah. back. So when it, while he's here, he should see us. But yeah. I was going to say, keep in mind that the, the July 4th break is an interesting break. It, it's shorter, and more than likely, you will be able to find your public representatives out doing something. Yeah. At a parade, at a yeah. fireworks show, a carnival oh, of you some want, type. You want to know a fun way of like finding out exactly where they're going to be? Just put their tweets on notifications. Yep. Like, you know, uh, uh, for people like us in California, it's going to be more difficult. Right. Because both... Uh, uh, Kamala Harris and uh, what's her face? Feinstein. Feinstein are Northern California right. based. So we'd have to go up to like San Francisco and to go to their in, 4th of July run into yeah, yeah. to run into them. Not like it would do anything either. Just go like, hey, Kamala Harris, don't take away health care. Okay. Well, oh, was, well, that was easy. <laughs> and, and for Harris, it's a yeah. lot of like, good job. Keep up the good work. Yeah. Keep up the good fight. Now, Feinstein, I got some choice things to say to her. But oh my God. um. Uh, so, the least of on. concerns, though. Hold on, quick sidebar. I, I just I, this because this bothers me as uh, somebody who doesn't like either the Republican or the Democratic Party right now. Yeah. Uh, so I, I listen to Pod Save America. Okay. Uh, because I like uh, how they discuss the news, but I don't necessarily agree with them all the time. Sure. Yeah. Uh, on the bonus episode that was just dropped today. Uh, which I haven't listened to yet, mm-hmm. but I'm going to already comment on it. They have <laughs> Debbie Wasserman Schultz on oh, there. God. And if they don't spend the entire opportunity of them having Debbie Wasserman Schultz on the podcast to like ream her a new asshole for 20 minutes or however long they have, which they won't. I they don't, won't. I don't see the point. Like the, uh, we can all agree that there are Republicans and there are Democrats who are terrible and ruining the good work that the rest of the party is trying to do. Most of them. Most yeah, of most, them are doing But that. I'm saying, like, there's there's ones who are fine. Like, you know, like, Harris hasn't done anything Horrible. either way to, like, really upset people or right. really, like, inspire them. And and I, I will take that over the, Whereas, the chaotic like, evil. But I'm saying, I mean? like, uh, uh, Pelosi. Right. Like, Pelosi could never... Anytime her name is mentioned, yeah. Even if she said something like, uh, uh, "I want to make sure every single American has a gun," it's just like Nancy Pelosi doesn't care about me. Like she could, she's she, doing your thing. She could start. <laughs> she could like tomorrow just be like, "Hey, I'm a Republican now," and they're just like, "Fuck you, Nancy Pelosi." They and they literally yeah. would. If, yeah. If Hillary Clinton became a Republican, she yeah. would still get that hate. She is a Republican, well, and she true. still gets that hate. <laughs> that's true. She is a Republican. Yeah. So. But yeah, so uh, I, I guess you'll have to check in next week and let us know yeah, whether or not exactly. she got the reaming that she deserves. No, but she wouldn't. And like, you know, just like nobody nobody who deserves the reaming ever gets it from their own party. No, of course not. Yeah. And, and it's uh, there have been times like I, I feel like I saw a Megyn Kelly interview back in the Fox News days uh, <laughs> where she was interviewing Ted Cruz and she actually gave it to him on a couple things. Yeah. Like sort of stood in that like moderate Republican range. And started like, how dare you to right. Ted Cruz? Uh, but, I mean, it doesn't work because he doesn't have a soul and he doesn't care. Yeah, not, he just you know. sits there and smiles yeah. at you and then answers a question you right. didn't ask. Right. Like, <laughs> well, well I do, I do believe Jesus is important. I appreciate you. At, this was about the health care bill. <laughs> I go to church every single week, I have to say. I appreciate your focus on my religious practices. Uh, yeah, but no, so... Um, Back to the back to the topic yeah, yeah. again, which is go out and find your representatives in a state like Maryland. It's super easy to do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can tell you that. Um, of course, now their names escape me. Cardin will most likely be uh, somewhere at Frederick County Fair or Anne Arundel County Fair, somewhere like that. Yeah. And um, Southern Maryland, somewhere. Southern probably no no. Uh, what's his name? Will be in Southern Maryland. Um, not Cardin, but uh, oh Van Hollen. Van Hollen will yeah. be probably PG. in a Southern Maryland PG County area somewhere there. It's much easier to run into them because even if you live where I live, both of those places are a two-hour drive. Yeah. Like for us to go run into either of the senators in California, it's an eight-hour drive. Yeah, six, seven, eight-hour drive. Yeah. But, uh, you know, and there's other things you can do too. Just make the calls to the, uh, you know, it's unfortunate that we have to call to save our own lives, but that's uh, where we're at right well, now. Okay, so real quick, just before we move on, there, there was a, a Huffington Post article that, that gained a lot of traction this week. Yeah. Uh, that is sort of in line with this, and I just wanted to bring it up real mm-hmm. quick. Uh, the general piece of the article was, I don't know what I have to do to convince people that uh, showing compassion for other people 
is like my political. Yeah. <laughs> like all my politics come from, I think we should be kind to other people. Right. Yeah. And if it's like, if I have to pay 17 more cents for a Big Mac so that the person who works there gets a living wage, I'm okay with it. Sure. That sort of thing. Uh, and uh, most of the argument was, I don't know what to tell people who don't feel the same way. And that's because you can't, you right. can't tell them anything. But uh, 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 real quick, I just wanted to, to uh, not necessarily defend the other side, okay. but sort of speak to why a lot of these people feel this way. Yeah, here we go. Go ahead. From, from experience, <laughs> from experience, from being on that side of the aisle. Sure. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, like the, the argument being that we should have health care for all. Right. Or that uh, everyone should be entitled to health care. There shouldn't be uh, anything that keeps you. There should be no lifetime caps. There should be nothing, uh, no pre-existing conditions. Uh, the health care for all debate, right. essentially. Yes. Um, a lot of people on the Republican side are not against a health care for all style system. Right. They just don't want the federal government involved. Their problem is the government doing it. Right. Because anytime the government gets involved, it becomes more expensive. There's more red tape. There's more loopholes. It becomes more cumbersome. Except for healthcare. Oh, I'm not, I'm not, but, listen, yeah. I'm not, I'm not. I know, I'm just offering I'm, an alternative. Yeah, I'm not. The I'm only not, thing the government does right is Medicare and Medicaid. Right. That's it. But they, uh, a Republican make, could make an argument that uh, on a smaller scale, like, a portion of the of the population only 144 million people yes. right yeah. instead of the entire nation the 350 yes. yeah only about two uh third 40 percent of them only about 40 yeah. percent of them are covered what will they do with 100 <laughs> percent? there's no way there's no way I, they can do it listen i'm not i'm not making arguments against it i'm just saying that uh there are a lot there are a lot of people who just do not have the trust of government and therefore will not have the trust of I don't want to get involved in a system that is going to fuck me in the right. end. Yeah. Like I don't want to I don't want to start moving the cuz there's a lot of people who think that the Obamacare ruined healthcare forever. Yeah. Because you gave a lot of people uh healthcare. healthcare yeah. And now you can't afford it so you have to take it away. Yeah, you you're wrong by the way. All I'm not, of you who are you that again, just, just so it's clear. Again, just making it <laughs> making yeah. a point. But uh it is true to an extent that Obamacare has been very expensive and way mm -hmm. more not the not the perfect version of this. And when you have to make any kind of changes to it, it's going to be cumbersome and difficult. Sure. So that's the essential yeah. argument um, against. And they're still wrong. I, I understand the arguments I, and I get it, but you guys are wrong. Uh, in the end, I I, I I do believe in general compassion for people. I yes. think that I think that uh, uh, we should we should do everything we can within our power to help take care of other people. But I do I do strongly fall on the side of if the government is doing it, then I don't like the chances of this being great. Except for that, government insurance is has the lowest administrative cost, the highest quality of care, uh, not the VA because that's fucked. But uh, when it comes to Medicare and Medicaid, they do it better than anyone in the private market, and that's just that's just a and fact. that's fine. But I'm saying. People think that, oh, the government is just going to give everybody health care. It'll be a single payer system. Right. And it'll be just like Medicare. Not saying that it won't, but I'm just saying well, they they think that the success of how it is now will translate to everybody. Right. But there are also examples like the VA where right. people do not get what they need and it is massively complicated and it wastes money and it's... Do you know what the difference between Medicaid and the VA is? Well, it's two different departments. Right. Uh, funded very differently. You will yeah. always fund Medicare and the VA gets whatever we give them. But more importantly, the VA is like the uh, National Health Service in England where the, a hospital is controlled by the government and then the care inside the hospital is basically free. So if you qualify, if you're a veteran, you just show up there and you can get whatever care you need. Yeah. That system sucks and it's failing in England. And when people are like, look how horrible healthcare is in England. I agree with you. It it sucks. And France is the same way. And um, I think no, Germany is shifting towards an insurance model. But the reason is because the government doesn't know how to do the infrastructure part of that, the setting up of a hospital. Right. Uh, those things can still be for profit because in the end, the insurance is what we are looking for. Everybody should have insurance and that negotiates with the healthcare providers and says, we $3,000 for an ER visit. That's great. We're going to give you a thousand. Then we're not going to take any of your patients. All right. Well, you are not going to get enough patients then to pay your bills because yeah. in a single payer system, we control 80% of I, the people. I also don't like anything that involves insurance. I feel like it, well, the, it's, the best way of handling 
uh, uh, healthcare in general is just eliminating insurance because insurance makes everything more expensive. Well, but Medica- Medicaid is insurance. You have a card. Oh, I know, but I'm saying it's line. not it's not the same as a pro- for profit insurance no. company. It's not like Aetna or some or but Blue Cross. The it's hospitals can be where, for profit. Where every you know thirty five cents of every dollar you spend on insurance goes to top level administration. Yeah. Not even the, somebody who works in a call center, like CEO, right. board of directors. But a hospital itself can still be for profit. Yeah. And what they then need to figure out is how many of the med- the new single payer system do we need to have? And what you'll find is it's about what they have now because you don't when you don't have to pay for people who don't have insurance. Yeah. When you're e- eating 80, 90, 150,000 dollars at a clip. Mm. When everybody has insurance, you can see just the same number of patients and still have the same amount of profit. It works the same way. And good news coming out of the Trump White House. Uh, apparently Trump yelled at the leaders of the Senate and said this is what it comes down to. It's either Trump care or single payer. Yeah. Those are our only options. <laughs> and thank God. <laughs> Let's hope. I just like to imagine that Bernie is sitting in the Senate. And he's just like, something just hit me. <laughs> I felt a disturbance in the force. <laughs> the time is upon us. Let's rise. Uh, yeah. So. That's, where, that's where Bernie just has to take a back seat for like, just a little while, like while Trump's just going like, we need single payer for all. Bernie can't be like, yeah, I agree. He's got to just like go somewhere, like go to a cave. Let him think it's his idea. <laughs> oh, what the Democrats need to do is go out there and be like, like hold up a sign yeah. that says like, don't listen to what I'm saying. This is just for the sound bite. Yes. It's just like, this is terrible. I hate this idea. Why is Donald Trump pushing this? I suggest that everybody call their senators and say they don't like it. We will fight against this <laughs> we, single payer system. We will fight this every single opportunity <laughs> we have. There will not come a vote. We will. They will require the nuclear option in the Senate. <laughs> Hundred votes. Yes. <laughs> I would also like if uh, uh what do you call it? Uh, uh shit. Like the the uh. Every everyone just goes. It's like that Obama sketch from Key and Pill, okay, where yeah. it's just like uh, Obama goes, like, "Well, I think we should make all the guns legal, even the high-powered machine guns." The Republicans, the Republicans, are, Republicans like, are like, "I disagree." <laughs> oh. so, uh, you really got Obama over a barrel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean that—that's the tactic yeah. to take. Hopefully, um, more unsettling news coming out of the White House this week, though. Uh, well, I guess not the White House so much as the MSNBC <laughs> studios. Um, Morning no. Joe had an interesting story this week. Did you see that? Uh, I didn't actually see the story. I just, okay. I just heard about uh, the temper tantrum that followed. Well, see, so, yeah, so there was a, uh, a five minute uh, basically video for Morning Joe uh, where uh, Joe and Minka, who are Mika? Mika. Mika. I always think it's Minka. Yeah, because you were saying Minka, Minka Kelly, Kelly outside. And it's, not. <laughs> it's Mika. Yeah. Mika and Joe, uh, who are engaged yes. to be married. And yes. I think they have a kid together too. I don't know about Or that. she has yeah. kids, one or the other. No, yeah. they talked about the kids. Um, but in the end, uh, apparently they've been getting followed by the National Enquirer, and they've been getting calls like, we're about to break a huge story. It's going to ruin your whole career. Mm-hmm. And then possibly, um, jo- what's his name? Shit. Uh, Scarborough? No, no, the son-in-law. Trump's son-in-law. Oh. Uh, Jared Kushner? Jared Kushner, uh, or someone from his office called uh, Joe Scarborough and was just like, hey, here you've been uh, being followed a little bit. <laughs> here there's a big uh, news story coming out. Well, if you go on TV and apologize to the president for everything that you've been doing, maybe that all goes away. Um, that's scary as shit. Like, yeah. What the fuck is going on in our country right now? I, I, can't, yeah. even, I can't even imagine. Uh, another thing that I, I just uh, enjoy about this is that Joe Scarborough is a Republican. Yes. Like, that's his position on that MSNBC show. Right. He's the that, conservative voice. Yeah, but I mean, like, he, he's the conservative that's not okay with Trump, which is. Right. A lot of them? Yeah. But I'm saying, like, there's, there's the, there's the, uh, Objectionist part part of the Republican Party right now, right? Which is like, listen, I'm a Republican. I've always been a Republican. I really believe in this shit, but there are a lot of people who are ruining this for the rest of us. Yeah, uh, and they start to think of it more as like, or as like a, a Bernie wing of the party as opposed to a Hillary wing, like on the Democratic side. Like we have a Trump wing and we have a 
There are basically regular, there are four regular parties. old Republican Party. There are four parties right now. Yeah, there is the Bernie uh, Democrats, Bernie Kratz. and then there's the uh, the Hillary or whatever they become in 2020. Yeah. Democrats, the the old Leo, guard Democrat. Yeah, uh, and then you have the moderate Republicans. And the extreme right used to be Freedom Caucus and Tea Party, but now I guess they're all just Trump yeah. Republicans. So, but like this is third world dictator shit that is well, going on. So the part that really upset me was not the, I mean, like the the threatening part of it was not great. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> just the fact that that Trump just takes the opportunity to go like they begged me to come to Mar-a-Lago. <laughs> And Mika had her face all bloody from a fucking messed plastic up surgery. plastic surgery. Yeah. It's just like, what the fuck are you doing, man? Like, <laughs> he's like a toddler. He's like a toddler. It's unbelievable. It's like, I it, I think the audience that are listening to us right now yeah. would really enjoy it if I said something horrible about you. Yes. And uh, uh, you know that we're going to we're going to play around and I'm going to give you a dig every once in a while. Yeah. But then I say something that I act like is a joke, but like really fucking cuts deep. <laughs> just like, well, you know that nobody really loves you and they just hang around you because they think that they're going to feel like better about themselves inside because you make them feel that way. I and suck the, by comparison. Yeah, yeah, and you're just like, oh god, that really that's yeah. that's too too close to the to the heart. Like yeah. why why would you do that? It's like we're just joking around. Fucking take a joke. Come on. <laughs> I call you fat all the time. You know, you're never you're never bothered by it. But I tell you that people don't really like you, and you get upset. <laughs> um, yeah, but uh, so one his response to what happened on uh, morning also. Show. Can you imagine Jimmy Carter ever doing this about like anybody? Like oh, I love Jimmy cool. Carter is like my new example of like yeah. how a president should act. But they like, made him sell the <laughs> peanut farm, or no, he decided to sell the peanut farm to avoid the emoluments clause. Yeah. He is all we should compare to. Yeah. The guy got elected because he was a peanut farmer in Georgia and he sold the fucking peanut farm. Yeah. And Trump is, you know, uh, selling access to the White House. Yeah. Uh, the God. Trump International Hotel in D.C. Oh. But uh, so the the thing, though, that I get from Trump's little Twitter tantrum, tantrum is everything that Joe and Mika were saying must be 100 percent true. Yeah. Because like, if somebody needs to tell him that like we there is a smart there's a lot of smart people out there. None of them vote for him. But there is a <laughs> lot of smart people out there and when we see that reaction, we automatically know. Like um it's like if you catch your girl cheating and she's just like, "What? Yeah. Why are you cheating on me?" And you're like, "Oh, okay, or, so it's clearly that's happening." Or yeah. it's like uh, uh tell me that you think I've been cheating on. Hey, uh I think uh I think you've been cheated on. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm just going to Move this phone away from you. <laughs> yeah. Don't ask to see it. <laughs> Nothing's on this phone. Right. Yeah, no, it, it's, it's, it's just like we talked about, like we talked about any time where he was just like uh uh talking more about Russia. Like yeah. it's just like uh you know, like there's been a lot of uh conversation about your ties with Russia. And it's like, I don't have any ties with Russia. Russia? Why Russia? Where's everyone getting this Russia thing from? He's saying Russia an <laughs> awful lot. <laughs> uh don't look behind this door. There's nothing about Russia behind it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's confirmation. And so that's the scary thing. The, the, his, his, first of all, his toddler-esque response is mm. disconcerting for the man who has uh, theoretically control of the military, but I guess that's being handled uh, mostly in the Pentagon. Check out uh, episode 168 for our talk about that. Yeah. Uh, but nonetheless, his response validates what they said. And if the, what they said is true, then he is essentially using another part of the media as his own personal dogs to sick on someone. Mm -hmm. That is third world dictator shit. And it's happening right here yeah. in America. I, I An extension upon that, uh, I watched uh, Sarah Huckabee Sanders uh, <laughs> doing her White House press briefing that day. Yeah. Um, the, the day of the Mika tweet. Uh, where it's literally all that CNN could talk about. Yeah. Um, now, when you say you saw it, it was it on camera? Because I know that that's... It was actually on camera. Okay. All right. Sure. Okay. It, it, a, a sidebar. Quick sidebar. Uh, I'm not I'm not making fun of Sarah Huckabee Sanders' appearance, but she has arched eyebrows yeah. that always make it look like she is like condescendingly like listening to you. It's just like, uh, I, I sort of have the same thing. Like my eyebrows stick up. A bit. Yeah. But like but hers. If you plucked him out to make him that arch like really harsh. That's kind of what she does. Hers look like she's like has like one one uh, side up. She's like, uh, I don't know what you're talking about. What are you 
what do you mean that we're not acting responsibly? <laughs> like it just it just show face. It, it just Fix makes your it, face. it just makes it a little harder to take seriously. Yeah. But uh she, so there was a couple things from that press conference I really wanted to bring up real quick. Uh, one, uh, she said that Trump has never uh, and will never uh, do anything to incite violence amongst people. And he thinks it's irresponsible that somebody else do that. And like immediately I just flash back to like, beat that guy up. <laughs> yeah. I'll pay your legal fees. Beat that guy or, up. Or the uh, don't beat him up. There's cameras in here. They want you to do it. Get him out of here. Like, yeah. Do it outside. Yeah. <laughs> uh, don't do it in front of the cameras. Uh, and and the, the paying the legal fees thing, that, that's a big thing. Yeah. That's inciting violence. Right. You hit him and you get arrested. I'll pay your legal fees. <laughs> sure. Okay. Well, no, he's a, he, he also says something like, I really wish somebody would punch him in the face. And then I'm sure that like. Her, Sarah Huckabee Sanders thing is like, well, he didn't want somebody to punch. Yeah, I mean, he, was, he, listen, he just said if it happened. Uh, what can he do? Yeah, yeah, unfortunately, I'm not responsible for that. Yeah. Um, the other one is there was a reporter. They do Skype questions, right? Uh, and the Billings, uh, Billings Gazette, yeah, Billings, so, Montana. It's usually like, uh, you know, like whatever the ABC affiliate of, you know, like um, it's ABC Nine and and Billings, Mon- uh, Montana, like, yeah. Uh, but the question, one of the one of the reporters, she she was getting a lot of like negative questions about Mika, and she's just like, "We're gonna take a Skype call now." Go ahead, <laughs> and it's like, "Go ahead, Joe, speak for me." And he's just like, "Hi, you know, this is Joe Swanson from uh, Billings Local Access, and we just want to say that we're so excited to have a president who's ready to make America great again." The question is, and I'm just like, "Okay, so you set up the." The president's slogan in the first part of the question. Yeah. So yeah. I know that whatever I'm going to hear next is not like... Softball. That's yeah. a softball question. Go ahead. Yeah. Like, why is Trump so handsome and why does he refuse to talk about it? Like, <laughs> it's like, uh, so, by the way, I, the thing I love about that, uh, that the Make America Great thing is, uh, does nobody see that when you start greeting people with a slogan and that slogan said back to you, that there's scary things about history uh, where, like... Make America great again. Yeah. Make America great again. Yeah. Like pretty soon we're just going to come up with hand gestures yeah, to make it some easier. Sort of like some sort of like hand gesture <laughs> for the, I don't know, like this. Make America great again. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it scares the shit out of me. Like everything that's going on just scares me. I like, I like some sort of hand gesture that, that is equal to extending my hand out to a great leader of some kind. Right. Like I'm reaching out to yeah. touch him. Hey, with all of my fingers. Yeah. He's tall hand. though. So it's got to be it's up a little bit higher. Up. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> Um, yeah, so it's scary. Who knows what the fuck's going to happen next? Every time you think that we've reached a certain point, yeah. we just fly past that and move on to the next thing. Well, the the part that upsets me or that unnerves me is that there is a lot of Trump fatigue that's going on. Oh, uh, yeah. Nobody, yeah. I mean, every single week we say, like, how can we talk about something without mentioning Trump? But, like, that he does something like this, and then we, we have to, talk, have about, to talk about it. Yeah. But the, the problem is that, like, at a certain point, people are just going to be like, I don't want to talk. I don't want to hear about it. Yeah, of course he did something horrible. Right. Of course he said Mika's face is bleeding from a bad of course cosmetic surgery. Of course he yeah. the National Enquirer on them in yeah. an effort to get them to publicly apologize. Right. Why of, wouldn't he do yeah, that? Yeah, of course he does these things. I mean, like, it, it's just like... Don't don't take... Just like we said, like, don't take the, the Senate postponing the bill until after the recess as like we've won yes if you if you really really feel strongly about this this is the time to put the foot down on the throat and kill it like make sure <laughs> metaphorically speaking yeah not, i mean not, like not literally yes. I mean, we're, we'll talk about the nri video in a few but <laughs> you know if you if you really don't want uh uh, this to have any chance of passing you have to go out and make your representative well aware of your position and know yep. that this is like a deal breaker. If you vote for this. 2018, yeah. 2020, 2022. Whenever you're up for election, this is what I'm going to remember when I go to the polls. Right. So it's up to you. Do you want to get your job back or not? Yeah. Um, and Republicans especially. Go out. Because I, the thing is, I know a lot of See, Republicans but, hate this bill. It, here's the other problem, though. I mean, like, you, what? They're not so. They're To an extent, they're, uh, Republicans are worried about not getting their jobs back. Yeah. They're worried about voting yes for this, and then that means the end of their political career. Yeah. But if you're like professional coward Jason Chaffetz, <laughs> you can just resign before things get bad. Yeah. You can get a soft landing spot at Fox News. Which he already did, yeah. You can push for $2,500 a month for every member of Congress in the Senate and the House of Representatives <sighs> to get a housing voucher because DC rent is expensive. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah, but it is expensive. Uh, it's <laughs> really expensive for the people who live there and work for a living. <laughs> who don't get a $2,500 voucher. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm I'm saying like you know like if uh, if Ted Cruz loses his seat because he voted yes for health care, yeah, uh, then Ted Cruz it's not like Ted Cruz has to live in an alley and eat no. beans out of a can. He's going to get a job at somewhere like Fox News or Breitbart or both. He's going to become a lawyer for a or get a board seat on something Oil horrible, company. yeah, uh, or uh, a <laughs> weapons manufacturer, right? Yeah. Um, so the, he's going to work for Enron yeah. and then <laughs> drive that into the ground <laughs> again. Um, but yeah, there, so there's a lot of scary stuff, uh, going on in the world. Uh, the scariest of which might be that NRA ad that, uh, came out this week, yeah. which, uh, take the opportunity, go down to the show notes, check out the NRA video. It'll be at over the anthem.com, uh, on the episode at youtube.com forward slash over the anthem. You can check it out there. Or I think we retweeted it as well. So at legend CB five at Robert and cheek at founding the future or at founding future, uh, on Twitter, uh, mm. definitely has it there, but fucking scary ass advertisement. Yeah. Um, so I don't know who's the name of the girl. Like somebody said, I should have recognized her. I mean, it looked like Nikki Haley, but no, it wasn't Nikki Haley though. Uh, I know Delaney? it wasn't, but it looked a lot like yeah. Her, which but is it was like, somebody Delaney, I think. Oh, I don't know. I have no idea. But uh, people said I should have known who she was, and I'm like, uh, I don't know who she is. But <laughs> apparently, what she is is the NRA, and apparently, what she what she wants you to do is to be scared of people who are a different color and buy guns and then shoot people. That's yeah. essentially the message of the ad. Yeah. It's that uh, there's more of us and there are them and they don't yes. have guns. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I love the responses to it where everybody's just like, hey, uh, guys, I'm a Democrat. I'm also a member of the NRA. I also have guns. So maybe maybe you should draw some lines here. Here's here's the other part that I find particularly off putting about all this. Um, so Philando Castile verdict was two weeks ago. Yeah. At the uh, episode 167 of the podcast we talked about. Yeah. And uh, we didn't get a chance to talk about the uh, uh, dash cam video, which came out after the trial was over. Yeah. Um, clearly because they didn't want to uh, influence a jury pool by releasing it ahead of time. <sighs> well, yeah. And, yeah. And I believe it would have influenced yeah. a jury pool. Yes. Yeah. Um, but it, everyone that I know basically had the same point of view on that, which is uh, I don't understand how the NRA isn't, Standing up for Philando Castile. Yeah, he was a card carrying concealed carry permit holder. Yep. Uh, he did exactly what you're supposed to do, which is to put your hands on the wheel and then let the officer know that you have a weapon in the car. Yeah, did that, uh, and then followed the officer's instructions when he said, "Let me see your ID." Went to reach for the ID, got shot in the chest. Yeah. Um, and I don't know how, as the NRA, you don't come out and say, "Well, because I mean, you're between a rock and a hard place because you support police." Yeah. Uh, but you have to say, I think you have to say but I this mean, like, cop is a bad cop. But I mean, like, uh, so I've never been the, uh, uh, I don't trust myself with a gun. Let's put it that way. I don't trust you with a gun either. I, I don't think I would be a good gun owner. Um, <laughs> All those videos that I see on Darwin Awards yeah. Twitter, where it's just like, so what you need to do is pow. Oh, whoa. I just feel like at some point it ends with me in my room, like spinning it on my <laughs> finger and then shooting myself in the face. Uh, but the don't please <laughs> don't spin the gu any gun on your finger. It's not yeah, meant for it, that. It doesn't work like that. Um, the the thing that uh, uh, gets me like I, I the idea of like having a gun to protect myself from people burglars who come in and try and take my things. Yes. Like I, I get it. I it's never been a concern of mine, uh, mm. especially here. Like I don't I don't really see how this this I, I'm gonna need to arm myself for a potential okay. problem, but who knows? I mean, I guess it, uh, when it's too late, it's, it's, too <laughs> it's late. way too late. Yep. Um, when you need it and you yeah. don't have it, you notice. Uh, Better the, to have it not needed. The wanting to have guns to hunt for mm -hmm. a proud tradition of hunting that America has. I, right. I can see the logic for it. I don't like hunting. Yeah. So I don't have guns for that reason. Okay. Um, but I do... There is sort of like a, a small part of me that wishes that I owned a gun for in case the government tried to <laughs> rise up and take over right. the power of the people and we needed to violently overthrow them, which is part of the Constitution. Yes. Um, and when I think of representatives of the government who are going to come and be the first line of defense in the 
uh, killing average Americans. Yeah. I think the cops are going to be the ones who are on the ground first for this yeah. Yeah. fight between government and people. Yeah. So I don't get like why you want to support the cops. Yes, because they're on your side. No, you don't. But at the same time, why do you want to support the cops if they're going to be the number one people taking the guns, taking the guns when it comes time to do yes. that? Yeah. If you're so concerned about the government taking your guns, you're going to have to realize that somebody is going to have to do it on behalf of the government. Yeah, I, and I love the trucks. And there's not enough people in the army and the military to take all your guns away. There is there's a, a lovely tumbler that is like uh, confused uh, confused Republicans or confused conservatives something like that where it's like a truck the back window of a truck and on one side it's like don't tread on me and uh, from my cold dead hands and then on the other side it's like the blue lives flag and I mean you don't understand that those are the ones who are going to come and take your guns that's yeah. how it works like the army is if not going to march anyone's going to do it it's going to be them it's going to be the seventh largest army in the world the NYPD a private police force or uh, you know the Chicago PD or the LAPD all of which are probably in the top 15 of police forces or of yeah. armies in the world um in fact, there are, I guarantee you the LAPD has a better air force than most countries in the world, right? Probably now. ridiculous. I saw one of their I saw one of their uh, their fancy attack helicopters yeah. flying over the one ten the other day. Attack helicopters, yeah. LAPD, yeah. yeah. Uh, go back. We've talked about the the, <laughs> the attack helicopters before. Yeah, but yeah, so here's the thing. And full admission, I formerly was a member of the NRA uh, back in like 2007, 2008, something like that. Uh, I had a membership for a couple of years. Um, I don't bullshit around with the excuses. I don't care about hunting. Uh, the guns aren't for that. Uh, I don't care about personal protection because I think in the end, uh, victims of, uh, are, if someone's going to break into your home, the chances of that are, are low to begin with. Crime, yeah. crime is not as rampant as they want to make you think. Yeah. So uh, I, and I also not like people don't break into homes like that anymore because daytime, you don't know. Yeah, like daytime is when they if, come in while you're at work. If I'm walking down the street with my iPhone, like <laughs> hanging out, going yeah. like, ah, I can't believe I just got the brand new iPhone. Then that's going to be the time I get robbed. Like, yeah. not, <laughs> well, they're not going to break into my house to hope I have a new iPhone. They're going to do it. And what are they going to carry out the 50 inch TV yeah. under your arm? Like, yeah, it, like things are, it, it doesn't work that way anymore. Right. But um, there we, we watched a comedian. Maybe a US also a place uh, like a place loaded with cameras. You're gonna come in and rob the place yeah. and then leave. Like so, so home protection. I think there are places where that's true. If you live on a farm in the middle of nowhere, maybe you need a gun for that. Hunting, I could care less about. I mean, I would hunt. I do hunt, uh, but I haven't in years, so I don't think about that. But we were listening to a comedian, or at least I was, who was like, "Just say it. Just come out and say it." So here I am. I'm gonna come out and say it. I like guns. I like the feel of them. I like using them. I think that they're, uh, they're awesome. Um, and there is something about holding an M4 or an M16 and firing it and just feeling it. There, there's something primal in that. And I enjoy it. And I'm allowed to do that the same way that you enjoy driving a car and the same feeling you get from driving really fast on a country road. I get from hitting a target in the 10 and the 12 hole with an M4 from 25 meters away. Like I yeah. just enjoy that. And more importantly, what you said there last, the Second Amendment wasn't to protect us for hunting. It wasn't to protect us from our homes. It wasn't to protect us from police killing us, theoretically. What it was meant for is if the government ever gets uppity, yeah. you need to have guns to protect yourself from the government. Right. What is the First Amendment for? It's to protect us from government. Yeah. What is the Fourth Amendment for? Protect us from government. Fifth, yeah. sixth, seventh, eighth. None of this is about a personal right to go do something. It's to protect you from the government. Yeah. The second is the same way. Right. And because I the founders... Argument. We're of the strong belief that if things ever got out of control, that the people would rise up against the government yeah. and take them down and right. and create a new system of government that would work. And I'm a one it, like uh, one that wouldn't be soiled with so many bad seeds. Yeah. Like I'm hearing uh, an argument right now where they're like, oh, so you and your M16 are going to take on the U.S. government. They have drones. They have bombers. Yeah. Um. Let's talk for just two seconds about Afghanistan, Iraq, Yemen, uh, Syria, yeah. uh, Libya. Uh, where else are we fighting a war where guys with Kalashnikovs are just basically beating the shit out of American soldiers? Like, yeah. there, when you are fighting in your home, uh, your home area against a superior force with superior arms, you call that an equal playing ground. Yeah. Because they are going to do certain things, and as long as you know the right ta the guerrilla tactics, you can use an M16 to just death by a thousand cuts, yeah. which is what Afghanistan, by the way, has become. We are just 
like losing three or four also, soldiers a week. And also, just as an aside, uh, the army can't. The army needs to have plans. Yeah. Any branch of the military needs to have a plan. We're not just running willy nilly into wherever. Right. Trying to kill well, as many people as possible. Right. But I'm saying like that might be the plan. Yeah. Like tomorrow's willy nilly and in cabal day. Kill everybody. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but if all of a sudden that everybody decided they've had enough and they're going to rise up on the government and just yeah. take DC, then there's not enough. There, they don't have time to make a plan to come back if just ten thousand people just crash the capital. Like yeah. There's nothing. There's nothing they can do. Well, and so uh, the final thoughts I have. But then the are, then then the thing is the the rule of large numbers too. Like, uh, it might not take Rob as much as it would for me to feel the need to arm myself and right. take on the capital. Like, uh, just like, <laughs> I just, guarantee that's true. <laughs> oh, I know, but I'm saying like, and then the extension, like you know, like it it might take you very little to decide to strap up guns and take the capital. Yeah, like a, but a strong my, suggestion from a couple of friends. <laughs> like, just a couple of people going like, come on. Yeah. They, uh, <laughs> there, there was a meme a couple of years ago of a guy pulling up in a van and like doors open and it's full of guns and bombs. I'm like, yep, that would be it. That's exactly all I would need. Just but like suggestion. to get my mom to do it would be oh. like a completely different thing. Like, but I mean, it's, we are bordering on the point where even moderate people are saying like, I feel like I need to arm myself to defend myself. But I mean, like it, it just seems, it seems weird that the NRA is like in this place of like, Let's rise up to defend the rights of gun owners, but we're not going to rise up and like they're they're asking for something very specific that yeah. doesn't make sense. Well, no, they're asking for a race war. They want yeah. well, yeah. Essentially, I mean, essentially, they are. It's all clouded words to say, "Hey, white people, there's a lot of scary brown people out there of varying shades. Yeah, get your guns and join us. It's not and we're about kill people. It's not about an uppity government. It's about an uppity race. Right. Yeah. And a lot of the great responses that I saw, and of course, I, I'm tuned into a whole different level of Twitter that you guys probably don't <laughs> want any part of. There's yeah. just a lot of really interesting for me, but disturbing for you stuff there uh but it was a lot of like they do they not realize that if the time ever came that there was a rising up that there would be people on the right and the left who joined forces and just said you know what you don't like the government i don't like the government now we might fight after this is all over about what we put in place afterward but for right now can we all just agree let's that just all team up and just yeah. get rid of what the bad like they're all they're gonna kill all of us so why don't we just team up and kill all of them and then We'll be peacefully figure out what to do next, which isn't right. true. We'll just kill each other after we've killed them. We'll kill each other, right. and then one person will yeah. be left. Um, it's a, it, I, I don't know. <laughs> I just think the whole thing is ridiculous. Like, I, I, why would you? The the entire Philando Castile thing just shows like it, the silence on Philando Castile, and then this ad coming out just tells me that. And by the way, if you don't know the NRA, uh, one of the reasons I stopped being a member was because when you find out the history that like it really was organized as a way to arm white Southern people when. Uh, the black slaves were were freed. Yeah, and Jim Crow era. They, as we transition from Reconstruction to Jim Crow, it was about hey, be have pride in your whiteness. Uh, go to your clan meeting on Saturday night and come to your NRA meeting after church on Sunday. And literally, it's the same people. We just don't wear hoods a second time. Like yeah. It, so there's a lot of really negative history. That that being said, the message. I'm not with the organization, but I love the message of like hold the line because. As smokers, we know that when you don't hold yeah. the line, it that's, eats that's away the, quickly. Uh, the number one. So I I like this example. Like uh, uh, people who are in the NRA are probably more likely to be smokers than not. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and everybody who's in the NRA has had to deal with the. It used to be that you could smoke in a hospital or a gas station or a restaurant or wherever, which isn't necessarily was, good. No, no. I'm not saying it's a good thing, but I'm saying that enough people. Who had common sense and decency about it would say like, come on, can you not smoke in the hospital? Just go to the smoker's lounge at the end of the hall. Right. Just don't do it here where the machines are. Right. It's like, oh, okay. No, that, I totally get it. Right. I understand. I shouldn't be doing this around sick people. Go I'm going to go lounge. to the room, to yeah. the locked room at the end of the hall. Right. And then you smoke in the smoker's lounge. And then eventually it became like, well, we can't have the smoker's lounge inside anymore. So you're going to have to go down to the lobby. Wait, I was going to say, at first it was not on every floor. Yeah. Go down to the lobby. Right. And then it was. So now there's a smoker's lounge in the lobby. Yeah. And then it's the smoker's outside. Right. Go outside the hospital. And then it's, you can't be within 25 feet of the hospital. And then it's, you got to be across the street from the hospital. Right. Not within 25 yeah. feet of the hospital property. Because yeah. it's a no smoking property. Even right. Though we're outside. So if you're at Johns Hopkins and you're like in the middle of it, you have to walk all the way out into the middle of Eastern Avenue yeah. to smoke a cigarette. Yeah. 
Uh, and that is the holding the line. Right. Like, it's so if, it if, sounds if you, ridiculous. If you, say, if you say, like, oh, of course AK-47s are ridiculous and people shouldn't own them. Right. Then you're just opening yourself up to the argument of, like, after all these guns have been taken away and it's just like, well, all guns are terrible, so all guns should be banned. It's like right. you've already lost so much ground by giving up the what seems like reasonable yes. demands that... It now it, the the whole thing is now like fuck it nothing yeah, yeah. and I, I don't think that they're looking at that as an example but I think it's easy to draw a perfect example there right if people had said no we're gonna smoke where we want to smoke and you're not gonna be able to change this and if you try to change the law we're booting you out of office yeah then we would still be able to smoke now would you smoke next to the machine there would be that one guy who did it and yeah like buddy can you just go to the end of the hall probably yeah. like come on but most people would be like hey I'm gonna step out to the smokers lounge at the end of the hall. And we would still have that. But they didn't. Give, 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 give. The NRA, the NRA has just said, no, we are not going any further than this. Yeah, this is, this is our, our end. And this it is seems our stupid. Line. I get it. It seems stupid. But that's the reason. Because if you give a little bit, if you say, no, I guess we don't really need AK-47s, then eventually they're like, well, you gave up everything. Do you really need your airsoft guns? Like, yeah. now it's just promoting a gun culture, and we don't even have guns anymore. Right. And then you can't even That's shoot like the your... candy cigarette inversion. It's like, we can't candy sell cigarettes. candy cigarettes because it makes cigarettes cool for kids. It's like, well, by the way, we found candy cigarettes yeah. and uh, sugar, is yeah, sugar, it's sugar in uh, Universal City. Yeah. And like I almost bought them. But then like right before I did, I was like, you know what? I remember how horrible they tasted. Like, these it wasn't. A these good are candy. probably 70 years old. too. It's probably the same ones. They just never sold. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, so one more thing before we get out of here, if we haven't pissed off everybody uh, enough. Yeah. Uh, this episode is going to be coming out on 4th of July. So we haven't said it, but happy 4th of July, everyone. Happy 4th of July. Uh, happy, uh, especially happy to those who, like us, have a four-day weekend uh, for this 4th of July weekend. <laughs> I have more than a four-day weekend. Wow, well, yeah. <laughs> but sorry to people like Rachel who have to go in on Monday. And uh, then have off work on Tuesday <laughs> and then go back out on a Wednesday. <laughs> uh, Enjoy your week of two Mondays. Uh, oh, God. That, I didn't even think about that. But yeah, it's essentially you're, you have two Mondays. That yeah. really sucks. But so... If we haven't pissed off enough people, uh, <laughs> it is July 4th holiday. And I just like I proposed the question to you outside, which was essentially, how do you feel about July 4th? And I, I mean, like, I'm okay about it. Like, I, I, I don't really, I, 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 I appreciate the, the fact that we have a celebration of the country every year that is based off of the time where we founded the country. Okay. Um, I don't now, you like know that J- July 4th actually is not the date that any of that stuff happened. Yeah. But it's our, our it's signifying date, date sure. of okay. the, of the agreement. Okay. Cause I mean like technically if you want to go, you know, the continental Congress was meeting for weeks beforehand and there was and weeks after. Yeah. And, uh, July 2nd was the date that actually everyone had signed. Right. But so. July 4th was the date of notice. What? Well, Benjamin Franklin said July 2nd will be the date that will live in the his- the annals of history. Close. <laughs> yeah. Close. The one that's written on the document is the one we remember. Yeah. 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 Um, um, but go ahead. So you're pro July 4th. I mean, uh, uh, kind of. I mean, like, I, I don't, just generally speaking, like, over patriotism bothers me. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't like the, like, America's greatest country in the world. Like, you know, like, of course we're, you know, wearing the red, white, and blue outfits and everything like that. But I mean, like, you know, I enjoy cooking out. I enjoy hanging out with friends. I enjoy sure. uh, generally thinking about the, the fact that I'm in a better position than somebody who lives in Botswana. Sure. Uh, Do you know anything about Botswana? No. Yeah, okay. So that's just a big assumption. That yeah. You're living better than Botswana. Right. Okay. Just, um, just asking. Yeah, it's just, uh, by the way, Botswana is not even a country anymore. But go ahead. Yeah. I, I just... Uh, well, so clearly our country is still <laughs> around, so it's better off. Um, yeah. But the... Uh, the the patriotism doesn't do anything for me, but the the idea of you know fireworks and grilling out and everything like that. And, uh, so let me propose this to you: What if we had instead a Midsummer Night celebration? Okay, where July the evening of July Fourth, we had fireworks and we cooked out and we celebrated the middle of the year, uh, just the you know the general summer time, not the technical July or the June harvest twenty sixth, no, not harvest. June twenty sixth till uh, August or September twenty sixth. Yeah, but just a midsummer enjoy party in the middle of the month and we could take the patriots like the solstice it. yeah but it's yeah. not really near a solstice well i know but i'm yeah. saying like there's like there's that. some cultures that that have 
big celebrations around solstice. June 26th. And yeah. And we're just postponing it like a week and a half to July 4th. Yeah. So how would you feel about that? Uh, I mean, uh, fine. I, I would like that there's some sort of tie to... You see, I feel like uh, the... No. Mm, Looks like we lost a live video. Sorry, yeah. guys. Um, I feel like if there's some sort of tie to American history... Yeah. And I... I it's like you remember all those uh, cartoons that used to talk about Christmas, like when they'd have the Christmas episode. Sure, yeah. The the little girl would just be like, "Oh, I can't wait to get presents," and it's like, you know, this day is more about present, more than just presents. And then something happens where they're like trapped in an attic or like they're locked into the basement or something like that. Yeah. And it's like, all right, well, since we're down here, I'll share you with the story of Christmas. Right. Yeah. And then you learn about, you know, Jesus and the manger and Mary and Joseph not being able to find a place and blah, blah, blah. So on and so forth. Jesus or yes. <laughs> Christmas. Uh, Saturnalia. Yeah. Which yeah. was the Roman holiday that they put Christmas on. But right. Yeah, but ahead. I'm saying like if the, if the, with 4th of July, I've, I would like there to be at least some sort of tie because the idea of it is based off of the signing of sure. America becoming its own country sure. and separating itself from the British. And I'd like there to be at least some opportunity to have the, the moment where you go like, well, you know, Timmy, this is, this, what, it's really about. This is what it's about. Okay. It ties back to so. us separating ourselves from a colonial England and... I'm going to say something that's a little controversial. So just okay. hold on. Should I go? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you want to be on camera for this. You might want to just black out. Can we put a black bar across your eyes to hide you? So we'll just have like something dipped down. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, here's, here's my feeling about it. Uh, Fourth of July is uh, a huge masturbation session for a nation that at one point may have been the greatest nation on earth, but isn't anymore. And we pat ourselves on the back and we you know, run the flag up the flagpole and we say, hey, aren't we great? When we're really not. Um, but the only thing the, that America is number one in anymore are not good things. Like number of people uh, incarcerated per capita. Yeah. Uh, number of violent deaths, uh, you know, heart disease, diabetes. Right. All of these things we're number one in. Not anything good. Um, and we should not be celebrating. We need to maybe take a little time and say, you know what? We are not a country we're celebrating anymore, uh, and we shouldn't. The other thing I really hate is the whole. Can I can I counterpoint this? Go, well, let me make my second point, and then you can counterpoint well, both because they're kind of related. Okay. The second one is the flag napkins, the flag towels, the flag bathing suits, the flag thongs, the flag uh, flip flops, all of that stuff. First of all, it's like patriotism threw up all over you, and it I really hate that, and that's fine. Uh, but. How is it when I put an American flag on the ground and stand on it in protest, this is horrible. But when you put it on a shoe and stand on it all goddamn day uh, next to your grill, it's fine. Or when the thong is running up your ass, that's fine. But I can't uh, – or when you're drying yourself off from the pool, that's fine. But I can't burn it in protest because obviously that's a bad thing. Like mm. it's – you're essentially saying that we don't hold the flag itself in high esteem, we just don't want you to have the right to use it in speech. Right. And it's all bullshit. It's all masturbatory, and it's ridiculous, and we need to get over our fucking selves. Okay, counterpoint. Go ahead. Um, the Orioles haven't won a World Series in our entire life. So until just before we... Until before. they do, I don't think we should be allowed to go to FanFest anymore. Okay. The FanFest should only be for champions. How dare you spend the time liking or... You know, enjoying being around other people who enjoy the same thing as you do okay. when they can't even win. And no, no, like you won the division, so there's a small victory there. No, if you don't win the Made championship, the if you don't win it all, okay, then there should be no fan fest. I'm fine with you that. You shouldn't be allowed to see your players. You shouldn't be allowed to be happy. You shouldn't be allowed to wear your Orioles gear. Do you, well, like, one, that should be a rule that that would just improve your life. I think <laughs> just being able to wear something other than Orioles. Yeah. Gear. But, um, in the end, though, do you, do you really think that the Fan Fest and the July 4th holiday treat their subject matter the same way? No, but I, I mean, like, I'm just making a I'm trying to do my best to to make an example of how do we one one can one can be proud of where they're from and the country that they're from, despite its faults. Yeah. Even though like even though we're not number one in any of the things that you want us to be number one in. Right. You can still like your country. Do our discussion just like you know, like when the Orioles were the worst team, and I'd still go to Fan Fest. I can still like the team, even though, 
even no. though they're the worst. You what know? were our discussions at FanFest? What, what do we t- like to talk about? Like when it's going to turn around. Let, or th- why are, this why are might we going the to the pitcher's panel? To hear what they have to say. Because we've had a problem with pitching, and we want to make sure we're addressing the problem. Right? Yeah. Why are we going to go see Buck talk about uh, his lineup? And what he's planning to do with this this season. The, I'm I'm not saying it's a perfect example. I'm just no, no, saying it's a good yeah. example. I like it because we go to Fan Fest and it's an opportunity to discuss what has failed us in the past and what are we doing to address that in the future. Yeah. Does anyone do that on the July Fourth holiday, or do we just say we're the greatest? We're the greatest. We're the greatest. USA. USA. I think, I think some people do. Well, people and who I, have to go to a barbecue with me, yes, because I'm going to force the issue. But I'm saying like the you know there there's. Plenty of people, you know, if there's 10,000 people at Orioles Sand Fest, yeah. there's 2,500 or so of them, at least, who are like, Orioles are going to win it this year. I'm so excited. But like, why are the regardless of yes. whether or not Luis Matos is leading off for you. like, But they, they go in with that faith because they think the, the reason we celebrate is because let's look at what they've changed from all the failures. Right, but I'm saying, past. like, even if the team looks like it's going to be awful. Okay. They would still come in going like, this is the year. This is the one. This is where we right. turn it all around. Much like there's people who don't pay attention to the numbers and say America is number one because we're free and other countries aren't free. And yeah. And, and there's like uh, a uh, no, clip. no. Can we put that in the show notes? Too, <laughs> that clip from the newsroom? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But the, I, I just, some people are always going to, to love it regardless. And I think that that's fine. They, they've, they've, if that makes them feel better, then let them do it. It's fucking dangerous. Because I, when you have people that love the country no matter what, they follow orders no matter whether they make sense to them or not. Okay, but so so take this for uh, just as – because we talked about uh, – uh, when we talked about toplessness yeah. in Ocean City. Oh, uh, everybody should check out that episode too. It was at 166? Something like that. Yeah, 166. When, when, when I – my overall problem, my overall thing was, if this is a big enough issue for you, go out and do something about it. Okay. Like, go to, what what's the county out there? Ocean City? Worcester. Worcester. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, like, go to the Worcester County Town Hall. Yeah. And tell your representatives that, you know, this won't stand one summer longer, and this is important to me. And if you do that, then things will change quickly. If you don't, then it won't. Sure. Uh you know, if you want homelessness to not be an issue in America anymore, right? Then do something about it. Okay. Don't just talk about like you know, like homelessness is really bad. Go somewhere, do something. Give money to a homeless shelter. Okay. Give money to a church that opens up its basement to homeless people. Okay. Uh, you know, go to a. Uh, I can't think of a better term for it, so I'm just gonna say soup kitchen. Okay. And help out feeding people. Like right. do something. Like if you if if you want to change something, do something. If people are thinking that their freedom is perfectly fine as it is, mm-hmm. then uh, there's only so much I can tell them before they're going to actually do something. But and some of them will never do something. Some of them are fine with the way things are. Yeah, and, and it's not. It, believe me, people don't realize how bad things are until it's way too late. I, and I don't understand. I don't understand who can be so blind. I mean, I do because I fight with them on Facebook every goddamn day mm. about like, you don't realize how horrible shit is right now? No, no, man. We're making America great. What America? And yeah. what is great to you? Like, I don't understand it. But I'm saying like, you know, generally, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that I am a lot, that I, I was born in this time, in this place, uh, because there are things that are, are available to me now that, you know, if I was born in Djibouti, like I wouldn't, I wouldn't be allowed to, like the, the infrastructure to become a filmmaker wouldn't be there. Right. Like, you know, maybe I don't have the same quality of life that I have in America. True. Uh, perhaps my schools aren't as good. You know, there, there's examples. Yeah. Not saying that the schools here are great and Djibouti schools are terrible, but maybe I'm having a better overall education yeah. than I would have otherwise. Sure. So, I mean, why I think that there's a place where you can be, where you can be thankful for the opportunity that you were raised in a place where you have the availability to both enjoy the splendors of the, of the country that we are mm-hmm. and be critical of its faults in a hope of making it better and not, you know, that that this doesn't have to be, you know, like America has faults. So therefore fuck America. If it can be, I like America. I love America. I love where I'm from. I appreciate the, 
the sacrifices that people have made to allow my life to be the way it is, but I have concerns. And if and that's not have... that it, it's the same thing as the Orioles. Like I can like the Orioles, I can love the team, and I could say like Ubaldo's a problem. If we could like, have that discussion at any uh, Fourth of July party anywhere in the country, I would agree with you. But there are places where you would be chased out of the party for saying anything anti-patriotic on this day. Right, but I'm saying like you know if we went to we go home for next opening day. Yeah, we go to pickles. And there's some guy who's sitting there in the corner, like being really loud and getting uh, ruining everyone's good time. Yeah. Saying like, I don't know why you guys are all here. It's not like they're going to win. They're not going to win the championship. They don't have a good enough team to win the championship. I don't know why you all are so fucking excited. Right. If we spend all our time trying to make this team better, then we might actually win rather than just accepting this piece of shit. Like, yeah, that'd be my new best friend. I'd be like, well, yo, let's, let's yeah, do but, that. But at that time, to- like at that exact point is not the time to do it. You and I disagree about that. That's I think fine. It's always it, the time to do you, it. Listen, if if I went to a Fourth of July party and somebody wanted to talk about everything that's wrong with America, I would happily talk to them about it. Me too, because I had a lot of whiskey in me. So. I don't. I don't think that it's the. It doesn't need to happen now. Yeah. You know, it doesn't need to be the. It, this it does sh- July Fourth doesn't be. need to be it the national be the let's shit on America day. Yes, it should be. No. Let us make the country that we can once again celebrate and be proud of. Until it is. I will not celebrate. That sounds an awful lot like "Make America Great Again" to me. Listen, <laughs> I, here's my pledge: uh, I may eat burgers. So exactly, tell me when America was great and why it has fallen off since then. I uh, listen. It's not my. You need to ask about <laughs> that uh, at Donald at real Donald Trump. Yeah, answer his question. Um, but here's my pledge: <laughs> um, fake C, <laughs> fake legend CB5 and his fake news. Here's what I'm going to say. Uh, on Tuesday, today, when you're watching this, uh, I may um, I may have a burger because a man's got to eat. Mm. I will definitely be drinking whiskey because I just like whiskey. Yeah. Uh, but I will not. And be, it's basically a Sunday. Yeah, it's basically Sunday. So Sunday fun day. <laughs> um, I will not be celebrating the fourth because I don't think that this country is worth celebrating. Are you going to enjoy a firework? If I mean, if there are fireworks there, but that's only because the fireworks remind me of my next point, which is I will once again celebrate 4th of July as a date to be proud of America when uh, a few weeks after the friend rolls up with a van full of bombs and uh, guns, we celebrate in the smoldering ruins of D.C. I'm not, I'm not, uh, the thoughts of the Rob thoughts Jeker, of Robert is, in Jeker is in his alone. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be a country worth celebrating. Let me tell you. Anyway. Oh, yeah. so one bit of good news this week. Let's yeah. just touch real quick. Uh, Justice Kennedy, who everyone was worried was going to retire after this term, he is 80 years old, and typically there's this like, well, 80 is a good year to step down, uh, has basically announced that he will not be stepping down from the Supreme Court. So thank God we got one more year <laughs> to until before Trump gets another lifetime appointment on the yeah. Supreme Court. So whew, thank you, Justice Kennedy. Uh, and he's going to be a good <laughs> Thank you for candidate. making America great again. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, if there was anybody who could, it was you. So thank you. Hey, does that mean Trump key is keeping some of his campaign promises? What? He's making America great again. Yeah. Keeping Kennedy on yeah, the bench. Not, there you go. Not leaving. Not, Let's see that ad, Trump for America. You know what? You know what I can't wait for? And I feel like this is the sad uh, eventuality of like how this like can Trump, how can Trump get any worse kind of thing happens. Yeah. Where it's just like there's some sort of event where the Supreme Court is like up at the top of the stairs at the Supreme <laughs> Court and Trump just pushes Kennedy down. <laughs> or or Ruth Bader Ginsburg. He's just like, oh, it looks like you're stepping on this rug and just like pulls it and watches her tumble down. Well, just except like, for, for Ruth Bader Ginsburg. And then, she then does a backflip, kicks him in the side <laughs> of the head and lands on her feet and puts her hands back in her robe because she's secretly a ninja. <laughs> but, but then all the people are just like, yeah, well, Ruth Bader Ginsburg deserved it, and she shouldn't be on the court anymore anyway. And Trump's great for just taking Clearing care of this problem. Yeah. yeah, and it's like nobody like if Obama like even like just like uh 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 who was the one who just died Scalia Scalia yeah like if if Obama had just like accidentally bumped into Scalia and was like oh I'm sorry it would have been like what is he trying to do how dare he assault a, a Supreme Court justice he looks like he's trying to push him down the stairs I I think that, he wants to kill him that happened exactly 21 days before Scalia died I bet you that's the cause yeah didn't they actually say that Obama had Scalia killed wasn't that a thing I'm gonna yeah th- that is a thing I'm gonna have to get into you with that okay. off, off podcast because there's <laughs> we've already said too much there's, controversial shit so. there's, sensitive, there's sensitive information regarding that that I'd like to discuss with you okay all right um if you want more sensitive information, you know where you go, though? 
my Tinder page? OhTheAnthem.com, Corey at OhTheAnthem.com, OhTheAnthem on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and the listener line, 443-219-7595. Oh, what's that number again? 443-219-7595. And 7595? Yeah. Okay, we'll do that a little faster. 7595. Uh, and you can find me on all your social networks at Robert and Cheek. Make sure you check out robertandcheek.com, uh, where you can find links to my political blog, foundingthefuture.us, uh, where actually I have a really Troublemakers. Great... <laughs> all troublemakers. Welcome there. Uh, I also have a really good blog post about the NRA and holding the line, where I kind of talk about why it is what it is and why it seems stupid, but it's not. So yeah. check that out at foundingthefuture.us. Uh, you can also find links to the news website and the books, which are available on Amazon. Barrow's books. Which should be good inspiration on how we should celebrate fourth of july the movement insurrection check it out well i th- <laughs> i can't even i think we've done good here today i agree <laughs> <laughs> we've done something i don't know if it's good but as always you're listening to the ODS. if you're wondering what episode of the podcast put us on a list i imagine this one is no, this right is up at the top three seven nineteen forty two <laughs> All of them. But as always, you're listening to the Earth the Anthem podcast, part of the Earth the Anthem digital network. Make sure you do check out the Dirty Shore Underground, new episodes on Thursdays, and the Anthem Alliance podcast, new episodes whenever. Uh, <laughs> for Corey, this is Rob. Have a great week, everybody. So I'm proud to be an American, or at least I know I'm from occasion free. <laughs> <laughs> from time to time. Unless you're Adnan Sayed. Yeah. Mm.